In today's ultimate preview, we're going to be looking at the best players to go and buy ahead of double game week 25. We're also going to take a look at all the key injury updates ahead of game week 24 and whether or not it's worth investing in Manchester United assets. Before we get started in today's video, if you do enjoy any of the content that you see on the channel, be sure to like, comment and subscribe as we are trying to hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of the season and it would be massively appreciated by me if we could go ahead and hit that goal. Obviously starting off we are going to talk about Manchester City and their assets ahead of double game week 25 and a strong fixture in 24 and a pretty good one in 26 as well so definitely worth investing in some of those Manchester City assets. Now obviously we are going to have to start off talking about Foden and his amazing hat-trick performance against Brentford. I think that has put him on a lot more people's radars. I even said before this week, I probably think Foden, KDB and Haaland are the best City assets to go by. I still stand by that, but I think Phil Foden is going to be so much more highly owned after that super impressive performance. As you can see from his per 90 data as well, so far this season, he is putting in some very, very good numbers. I imagine that price is not going to stay at 7.9 million for too long especially the way FPL are manipulating some players prices I don't think we should talk about that in this video uh, his ownership as well is probably going to be super super high and if it was me I think I would be looking to go and get Phil Foden if not this week then go and get him next week because I imagine his price is going to go up his effective ownership is going to go up as well and if you don't have him like I didn't this week he absolutely decimated my rank I think he took me down like a hundred thousand rank absolute killer for me so definitely a player who is currently on my radar and I think he should be as well for you if you already have KDB and Haaland. Obviously moving over to KDB since his return from injury has been very prolific in point scoring as well. Obviously the standout performance being that 20 minute cameo against Newcastle United but back to back assists for KDB. You know what he's just ticking over very nicely. Obviously again still going up in price. I imagine that will continue that trend. Probably going to be hitting around that 11 million mark I imagine by the game week 24 deadline. Uh, obviously, a lot of people are probably going to ask, who is it worth going for, Foden or KDB? I still think KDB. I know Foden got the mega haul. He got the hat trick this week, but I'm still adamant that I think KDB will outscore him in the double game week. I just, I just can't quite see Foden playing both games or seeing out both games, to be honest, but he is in the form of his life at the moment. Absolutely killing it. That hat trick is definitely going to cement his position within the team, but I still think if I had to pick between the two, I probably would be leaning slightly more towards KDB. If you're wondering why his data looks so skewed as well he has obviously only played four games over the course of the season so his per 90 data does look a little bit mental but that will calm down the more and more games that he plays I've been using his last season data but I thought he wanted to refresh it see what sort of numbers he's been putting up and it's pretty good in terms of expected goal involvement per 90 the assists as well that he's putting up you know absolutely stellar he is still ticking on very nicely but obviously I think a lot more limelight is going to shift to Phil Foden but I think if I was to pick between the two I still probably would be pushed to recommend KDB over Phil Foden but it's become very very tight after tonight's performance obviously a man who is I imagine probably a lot of people's number one priority target for this game week it is Erling Haaland picked up a, uh, an assist on his first match back from injury well not his first match his first start back from injury let's get it correct as you can see his per 90 data is absolutely ridiculous nearly a goal a game 1.24 goal involved a game is ridiculous and definitely for me like still the number one priority target I know Phil Foden has just gone and smashed it out of the park but with that double game week looming, looming sorry I imagine he is going to be most people's triple captain choice look at the points per 90 that he's getting as well 7.59 is absolutely ridiculous I imagine that ownership is only going to continue to skyrocket as it is his price as well so very very expensive option I imagine a lot of people are going to have to do some research shuffling to go and get Erling Haaland back in but for me he still is the number one priority mainly down to the fact that I think so many people are going to use that triple captain chip on him and the captaincy chip and I feel if you don't have him 
it could be very detrimental to you and your season. So he's still the number one top priority for me this week. If I didn't own him, I brought him in this week. But if you didn't own him, he would be the player that I would be going to get. The next two players, I think we can kind of group them together. They are the other Manchester City assets. Now, I know City have a plethora of top players. But for me, defensively... I don't think I would be investing in anyone. Obviously, Kyle Walker is the most popular pick. But as you can see from his points per 90, it's pretty dismal down at 3.23. Just not representing worthwhile money for value. And obviously, City as well defensively. Only five clean sheets so far this season as well. I think they've only kept kept two in the past 10 games as well which is absolutely ridiculous so for me not worth investing in not worth taking up a city spot when you've got obviously the likes of Haaland, KDB and Foden all picking up attacking returns very consistently as well I would rather have those three over going through that defensive route same with Edison as well like I said I still would prefer Foden, KDB and Haaland. Walker probably though he is the best option he has only missed one game so far this season every other one bar another one as well where he came off a little bit early he has played out the full 90 minutes back in the squad as well for Manchester City today so probably it was something to do with his kind of personal issues obviously been cheating on his wife not great but you know that's aside from FPL but it has obviously had an impact on the game but if I was to pick a defender probably would be him but like I said I would prefer going for one of the other attacking options. Bernardo Silva is going to be the final player we're going to talk about in this section. A lot of people have asked me questions about him whether or not he's worthwhile bringing in. For me personally no. It is the other guys. Like, I think just paying that little bit more of a premium price for a better asset, it is just worth it. The data's not too bad, to be honest. It's okay. It's pretty average. But like I said, the other guys are, like, clear. Absolutely clear, to be honest. So for me, I think it's worth going for Foden, KDB, and Haaland. And like I said, Haaland still is probably the number one priority for this week. Continuing with the double game week theme, obviously we do have to go and take a look at Liverpool's potential assets that you could be investing into all in preparation like I said for double game week 25 obviously the game week 24 fixture for Liverpool as well is Burnley at home so a very impressive fixture for them to be honest and you know what pretty good fixtures to go and invest in obviously they do have the blank as well in game week 26 so you are going to do some have to do some preparation sorry to get these players back out of your team but these are the five that I think I've identified that I probably would be looking to invest in obviously I did cover this in yesterday's transfer targets video so I'm not going to spend too long on this section starting off we do have of course Trent Alexander-Arnold now for me personally I own Trent and I'm in a little bit of a sticky position to be honest what to do with him yesterday against Arsenal it wasn't a good performance was it ladies and gentlemen coming off prior to the 60th minute as well only picking up one point and you do feel with you know potentially Bradley being back in the side Trent's position could be up for grabs does he play you know the majority of both games in game week 25 at the current time of recording I don't feel personally confident in spending 8.5 million on a defender who is not even going to see out potentially the 60th minute mark so not good for me personally especially after yesterday's performance as well I don't feel too confident going in with Trent Alexander-Arnold I think if I was looking to bring in a Liverpool defender at the moment I probably would be looking at maybe somebody like Joe Gomez who might come in to replace Canate he's been absolutely terrific as well I think Andy Robertson could be a shout but I definitely need to see some more minutes from him before going for the likes of Trent Alexander-Arnold I just think at the moment his form's not quite there there's other players as well like we spoke about performing better than him as well so I do feel that position that he currently plays is up for grabs so if I was maybe gonna suggest Trent I think it's very slim now, to be honest. I do think there are better players to potentially go and get with Trent Alexander-Arnold. If you own him, I think it's a little bit of a different situation. I think we've kind of just got to stick it out, to be honest. Hope that he gets some good minutes. Hopefully, he puts in a good performance against Burnley at home and can take that into the double game week. But yeah, I probably would not be recommending going by and Trent off the back of that absolute stinker of a performance against Arsenal. 
Moving on to a player that I am actually looking to buy, it is Diego Jota. Now, the reason I want to get and get Jota in is I don't for personally think Salah, who's next to him on this list, is going to be featuring much or too heavily in game week 25. Obviously, just back individual training. We'll have to see Klopp's comments about Mohamed Salah's fitness before game week 24. If he's saying that Salah's going to be close, I do think that limits Jota as a potential option. I do think those two can kind of cross over a little bit. Jota as well blanking yesterday I do think the door has opened a little bit for Mohamed Salah to come back in if he is fit and available so with those two I think they hinge off each other if Salah is fit and available I think that makes Jota a less appealing asset but if we do get confirmation that Salah's gonna miss at least one of the double game weeks one of the games sorry in double game week 25 I'd be more inclined to go and buy Diego Jota moving on to Darwin Nunes again another player that I am personally considering bringing in my team some guy in the FPL community did a post about him today, speaking about all the good data that he's putting up, you know, the attacking returns he's got. I think it's like 14 attacking returns in 16 starts. This is Darwin, 1.15 expected goal involvement as well, so absolutely impeccable stuff from him. But as you can see, the goals and the assists and the points per 90 just not quite there, are they? Had a little bit of a price drop to 7.4 million, but I definitely think he is a striker. If he is fit and available for the Burnley game, then the double game week, he is someone I am desperately trying to get into my team or find a way because look at the data that he's putting up. It is only a matter of time before there is a mega haul from Darwin Nunes. I think imagine, a lot of us are probably tired of saying that, especially if you've been a Darwin owner. I personally haven't this season. I am thinking about ways to try and get him into this team because because, like I said, the data that he's putting up is absolutely unreal. If you can convert some of his chances, get that little bit of luck, I think he could be a stupendous asset for double game week 25. And then moving on, I've had a few questions about this one. It is Luis Diaz. For me personally... Not really an asset. I think his minutes are pretty secure in that Liverpool side on the left-hand side. But looking at the data that he's putting up and the goals per 90, it's just not quite there, is it? You know, Trent nearly outperforming him in terms of expected goal involvement. Points per 90 as well is the lowest on this list. Yeah, I just think I'd rather spend that extra 0.6 million going and get Jota or pay the exact same price and go and get Darwin Nunes, to be honest. I feel he's got so much higher upside in his game over Luis Diaz. So I definitely think he's one not to be considering. Had a few questions about him. So there you go. Just putting that one out there. I would not be going to get Luis Diaz. Let me know what Liverpool assets you're thinking about bringing in for game week 24. And are there any that I've potentially missed? On screen right now are three assets that are very highly owned and currently all are flagged within the game. So I thought I would give you a little bit of an injury update on each one of these. Potentially maybe you're looking at selling them for a double game week player or maybe just a little bit unsure what to do with these players. So before you sell them, listen to what I have to say regarding these injury updates. Starting off with Ariola, Moyes has provided an update. It does look like they just took him off as a precautionary measure and Moyes does hope that he will be okay for game week 24. So maybe if you're in a position like me, you've got to you've got Arioli. you were thinking oh god I might have to take a minus four to go get a goalkeeper in it does look like Ariola should be available for game week 24 so I think we can rule out potentially going replacing him with another goalkeeper that was my current thought process and where I was at with my game I was like oh my god I'm gonna have to get rid of this guy but it does look like he's okay it was a little bit of a proportion precautionary there we go precautionary substitution for Ariola. so he should be back for game week 24 so nothing to worry there same again it's looking pretty much the same for Bukayo Saka it seems like this guy always goes and gets injured but regardless of it Arteta still wheels him out whether or not rain or shine he's got casts on his leg he's in a wheelchair he will obviously play for Arsenal here is the quote for that one as well it does look like he is going to be fine and okay for game week 24 again just Suffered a little bit of a knock, felt a little bit of pain. But again, it is looking like he is going to be completely fine for uh, game week 24 and obviously potentially game week 25 as well. So if I had Saka, again, probably would keep him. He has a very good kind of track record as well of obviously picking up knocks and then still managing to come back from them. 
The last one is a little bit more cryptic, to be honest. And Eddie Howe, he is a bit of a bastard, isn't he? You know, with these kind of injury updates. Doesn't give too much away. Obviously, there was pictures of Anthony Gordon leaving St. James's Park in a boot. And the update that Eddie Howe has provided, he's basically just said he felt a knock and couldn't continue with the pain. Looks like it's a potentially twisted ankle as well. A little bit of swelling around it. So they're going to have to see how he is getting on with that one. It doesn't sound like overly great, but at the same time, twisted ankle, probably a little bit of ice, maybe one to two weeks out. He might miss game week 24, but could be back for game week 25. So Newcastle still have Bournemouth. Obviously, if you're looking to avoid free hitting in 26 as well, he does have Arsenal. So maybe this week he is going to miss out on that Forest away game, which is a little bit of a blow. But I still think, you know, regardless, I still think I'd probably hold on to him. Nothing kind of ligament or anything like that. It's probably just a little bit of swelling that needs a little bit of time to heal. He very much as well could be back for game week 24. But we know what Eddie Howe is like in his press conferences. He isn't going to give too much away on Anthony Gordon's fitness. So this is probably the best we're going to get out of it and kind of have to make our own judgments. But for me personally, I feel with it just being a little bit of a twisted ankle, maybe a little bit of swelling it could go down by the weekend maybe the weekend after but I think you know it's one maybe a couple days one two weeks out but nothing major to potentially concern yourself with if you are thinking about potentially transferring him out and in the final section of today's preview, I wanted to talk about Manchester United assets. Now, they've been very much going under the radar, picking up some very good points over the past five game weeks. As you can see, these are the three players that I have identified, Rashford, Garnacho and Rasmus Hoyland, all picking up some very good attacking returns over the past few game weeks. And I think they could be on a few people's potential shopping lists this week. So obviously, why would we want to bring in these uh, these United assets? Well, you know, the fixtures, they're okay. Villa away, probably not the greatest. Luton away could be a little bit of a tricky one. Fulham, City, Everton, then they are probably going to blank in game week 29. So nothing to kind of focus on too much. But there are some positive greens in there. Luton away, they are in a little bit of a form at the moment. But again, I, I think eventually that is going to come to an end. It just has to. Fulham at home, you would expect United to win. Same with Everton at home as well. So realistically, probably three out of the next five are pretty positive fixtures. And I think some of the assets, not all of them on this list, do represent amazing value and are pretty good enablers. So we're going to start off with Rashford. And for me personally, I don't think I would be bringing Rashford in. Three goals, one assist. Okay, the data's okay. The points he's been picking up are pretty decent. 8.4 million though. I think with people like Foden and Jota having double game weeks, they take higher priority for me. You know, even Saka as well with him playing in blank game week 26. There's... There's just more kind of exciting assets who I think have higher ceilings, especially with double game weeks and performing in blank game weeks. So for me personally, not going to go out and get Marcus Rashford. I get why people are potentially looking at him again. Has picked up a, a few goals and a little bit of form surrounding maybe as well this controversy that's going off. It could have a negative impact on his game and his kind of playing time as well. But you know, for me personally, I think there are much better assets that we've already covered in today's video. Foden and Jota as well are the two key kind of standouts for me in that regard. However, on the other hand, Garnacho, I think, is a great asset to go for. Especially if you may be on a wild card in the next few weeks. 4.8 million. That is a fantastic price for a great enabler who's playing games, getting himself on the score sheet. Picked up a brace yesterday as well. I had him on my bench. A little bit of a stinger, but... It is what it is. I now know that he's definitely capable of delivering these bigger hauls for me and my team. He is one of the highest scoring players for Manchester United over the past five game weeks. And like I said, is a fantastic enabler. Obviously, with the likes of ha uh, Haaland, KDB, Salah and Son potentially returning quite soon as well. Probably post game week 26 for those latter two. I definitely think having a cheap enabler midfielder like Garnacho that is going to be playing. Maybe this is your wild card. Maybe you're thinking, okay, they're going to have some doubles further down the line as well. Or Manchester United. I think Rasmus, uh, not Rasmus Hoyland, sorry. Garnacho could be a great enabler. 5.6% owned as well. So a big, big differential. 4.8 million. He can sit on the bench for the more difficult fixtures. You know, he's not eating too much of your budget. 
and allows you to do some very exciting things with other players. So he is probably the top asset I would be looking to go and get in my team for maybe game week 24 if you've not got any kind of serious issues or maybe trying to find a way to potentially go and get Erling Haaland in or KDB or one of these other big hitting kind of players. If you need, you know, an enabler, maybe you've got two transfers this week, you need that cheap mid midfielder to cover the Haaland price rises I think Garnacho could be a very sensible pick. Moving on to the last one, and it is going to be Rasmus Hoyland. It does seem like he's finally found his finishing boots. Four goals, two assists for him. The data isn't anything to really write home about, to be honest. And you know what? For the price that we're paying and the other forwards in the game at the moment... I personally don't think, you know, Hoyland is necessarily worth it. Again, with players having double game weeks, you're looking at the likes of Ivan Tony, Darwin Nunes. You know, there's obviously there's rumours of Bournemouth potentially having a double game week in 28. So Solanke, you know, if you've got the likes of Solanke, Watkins, Tony, maybe you want to keep Alvarez as well. Like, there's so many other, in my personal opinion, better forwards with better fixtures and showing better data sets. I think maybe Rasmus Hoyland isn't, you know, it's not the right time to potentially go and get him for game week 24, to be honest. So, you know, I get it. The form's definitely there. He started hitting goals, but he has scored four goals off six shots. Now, that even means one of two things. He is extremely clinical and knows how to find the back of the net and is a great finisher or is just currently getting that little bit lucky. You can kind of make your own judgment on that one. You know, personally, I probably think it's a little bit of luck getting in the right places, finally scoring some goals for Manchester United. But like I said, I do feel with double game weeks coming up for other forwards and slightly better fixtures, I think they are better than potentially going for Rasmus Hoyland. If you have enjoyed today's preview video, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. Like I said at the top of the video, we are trying to hit 5,000 subscribers. So if you want to help me hit that goal, be sure to subscribe, like I said, uh, there. Yeah, there we go. Well, thank you very much for watching today, ladies and gentlemen, and good luck this game week.